Hi, it's Kim with Embody Light. That's www.embody-light.com. Um, I haven't made a video for a little while. Just have been busy and just dealing with my own, own drama. But uh, I wanted to do this one for quite a while. Um, it's about relationships that we have with our children. Um, it comes up especially a lot when I do sessions with people, especially mothers. I think I need to talk a little closer here, especially for mothers and children. Um, mothers and daughters more than mothers and children, but it does happen with sons. So the first part I'm going to talk about is what can happen. Um, we're gonna, we got to start from the beginning. Um, when we are born, you know, we, we've chosen our parents for whatever reason or circumstance that we need to accomplish our life person, purpose. So we choose our parents for this. We're born into it. And some of these parents do not have a contract to necessarily be nurturing to us. For some of them, it's because we're coming in to work out past life situations and sometimes we've had really negative past life situations with our parents in other lives that we're trying to work out. That's how it was with me and my mother. We were uh, mortal enemies, basically. Always enemies. Uh, um, every lifetime I remember were an enemy. Um, there probably were some where we were friends, but I have not remembered those yet. But anyway, so a child is born. Now, for the first few years, um, the child doesn't, the first year, the child doesn't really lose touch with their spiritual connections. They're seeing their, their invisible playmates or actually spirit guides, friends from the other side. So when a child is born, they start to make that connection to source through their parents. And now, because you got to realize their parents are the source of everything, their food, their shelter, everything. So they're totally dependent on the parents. And they connect with the parents to source through the parents, specifically the mother. So when that does not happen, when there's no bonding, um, you know, there can be no bonding for a variety of reasons. For Like with my mother and I, it was past life situations. The other part of the equation was I was born full term, but only four pounds because she was on prednisone. And she wasn't a huge, large lady anyway. She was only four nine. Um, so I had to be in the hospital for the first five weeks. So we didn't bond. And she was always, because she was told I might not make it um, because she was so sick. They just didn't know what, was happen what would happen. So we didn't bond. So when, and this happens for a lot of kids, whether you're being abused or whatever. So when you do not bond with your mother, usually the mother, sometimes the father, um, we have to learn how to make those connections to source within ourselves. And so if that happens when you're very young, you never really lose your ability to connect with source. And so that does make you um, tend to be more psychic, have more spiritual gifts, except if you're so traumatized that you can't realize that. So, they don't make this connection through to source with their mother. And so what happens is they grow up uh, feeling like there was a, a void and emptiness there. So then they try to fill that void as they're growing up. Um, first, it starts with friends. So you try to replace because you're feeling, you're really having this feeling like there's something wrong with me because even my own mother doesn't love me or my own father doesn't love me. So you try to start filling this void with friends and your friends are going to mirror back to you the whatever you're thinking, feeling, um, understanding about yourself, they're going to mirror that back to you. So if you're feeling like you're not lovable, like you're not worthy, your friends are going to mirror that back to you because you're going to attract into your reality, even when you're children, people of a similar vibration that will agree with you. So if you think you're awful or unlovable, you're going to attract that type of situation into your life, which is what happens because you really don't know any better. 
Um, so then typically what happens um, for somebody who's, who's got issues where they didn't bond with a parent or there was a bad relationship, then what happens is as they become an adult and become parents themselves, they may try to fill that void with their children. Because you got to realize for a lot of people, when you give birth to a child, that is really the first time you experience unconditional love you know, you experienced it towards that child. Well, so you have this void that was never filled or you feel like it was never filled. So then you give that job to your newborn infant to fill that void. That's what I did with, with my children, not knowing I had any issues. Um, and so you decide, oh, I'm gonna be the best mother I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna do what my mother did. And you try to fill that void for unconditional love. Um, through that child and that kind of sets up a negative um, negative situation for the child because they're feeling their void and your loss and so you're parenting them from the perspective of how would you say this that you don't want them to uh, be harmed like you were or how you feel like you were harmed so you're going to make sure that they they know their love they know this they know that but you're doing it from the perspective of there's something wrong with them because that's how you really felt about yourself so you have to make sure you tell them that there's nothing wrong with them but what you're really doing is giving them the impression that they are so then you try to fill that with your children and that doesn't work. I've gotten old, so that's why I'm, why I'm looking down. I did this, a bunch of information came up yesterday. Um, so what we're actually doing with our kids, you know, when we're trying to fill that void, it's actually our projection about our negative beliefs that we kind of hand over to our children. Um, so then what happens is as they're, they're growing up, you know, if we're becoming enlightened, um, we, you know, before we come into our understandings, um, we may try to put blame on our parents or that kind of thing for what happened in our life. So then you got to realize your children are seeing you work through your issues with your parents and how you're blaming them and not understanding. Well, your children are getting the same kind of idea. That's what mine did because I was working on my issues with my mother, well, all of my life. Really just feel like they're complete now and she's been um, deceased since 2009. But so you, you show them that, or the way I did it, I showed them, well, this wouldn't have happened if my mother did this. This wouldn't have happened if my mother did that. Um, and so they saw me trying to clear all that trauma and come to terms with it. So they actually kind of thought, felt like it was normal when you grew up that you started finding fault with your parents for everything that was wrong with you. So um, this all gets very convoluted and can make really energetic, um, icky energy systems systems. Um, sometimes the parents try to be friends with the kids. Sometimes the parents are way overly protective because they're trying to prevent things from happening. And it really puts the kid, it makes the kids feel not safe and not balanced. Because what we have to realize is this is a lifetime where all of these timelines from all of these lifetimes are wrapping up. And so now as a parent, the way I felt about it, that I had to prevent all these things from happening in my kids. So I, I parented preventatively. And then when something would happen with them, I would go into total guilt and total meltdown about it because I perceived that it was my fault. I perceived it was all my fault. And that's not exactly true because what I didn't realize I kept thinking well I had this childhood so that I know how to parent my children and I can't let that happen what I didn't actually realize till much later on was that each of our children come into our lives with their own set of spiritual purposes 
and with their own set of things from past lives that they're karmically working on or bringing back into balance. I'm going to tell you one of the things that happened in my family that this was really hard to deal with. So my oldest daughter, um, she was the one who was taken from me in Salem. And, and if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that whole series. I gave birth to her in jail and they told me she died. That was my mother. Well, my mother, her sister and her mother, my grandmother, the three of them seemed to really be after my oldest daughter. Um, the aunt who lived in another state that I really never cared for at all would call my grandma up, who would call my mother up. And they would be telling me things like, there's something wrong with that child. She's never going to be able to do well in school. She's got ADHD. And um, this woman in another state making these diagnoses that she was totally unqualified to make. My mother would drive me crazy about this. And I knew that this child was very intelligent. And I knew that she had a very long attention span. It wasn't ADD. I knew she was like me when I was a child. Well, they were telling me that I was dumb. And so they're trying to influence me to take her into the doctor and get her put on Ritalin. It's like, no, that will diminish her spiritual abilities. We are not doing this. They finally, they ended up driving me so crazy. I had her IQ tested. She turned out to be 97% for her age. And that finally shut them up. Um, I just scream at my mother and hang up on her on the phone. But they were always seemed to be on this daughter. Well, it came to a head when my daughter got married. She got married out of state. She had a destination wedding, but we had the reception back here in our state. Well, my mother and my grandmother didn't come. They were sick. Well, no, that wasn't what they were doing. They were just trying to take that knife and stab it in a little more. I always thought that it was directed at me. But when I talked to my mother after she died, what I found out was that her and my oldest daughter had had other lifetimes together where they were also enemies. And so my mother, I always thought it was she was trying, when she realized she couldn't get to me, that she was going to try to get to my children. And I wouldn't let her. I protected my kids from her. Um, but that's what she was trying to do. And it wasn't just that she was trying to get at me. That was just a bonus, she told me, that it got to me. She was trying to get at my daughter. Because my daughter, just to illustrate the story, in a past life, I don't know who she was in France, but apparently someone of some authority, um, had um, the three of them, my aunt, my grandmother, and my mother, had thrown them in jail, and they got the guillotine. They were in jail for a long time and starving, and my mother's telling me, like, you know, like, that was her reason for treating Tina badly. I mean, that, I think that was in the 1400s. Well, come to find out, so then I said, Oh, so you mean the three of you were just walking down the street and she she snatched you and chopped through you in jail and chopped off your heads for no reason? There, there was no reason you were thrown in jail and, and executed. And well, the story was, well, no, the three of them were poisoning children, lots of children. I don't know why I didn't want to talk to her about it anymore. But she was caught for that, and then they were put in jail. And then she's trying to tell me, but we were there for a long time, and we were starving. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know why you were there for so long. That's done, and it's over. But really, um, if you were poisoning people, and that was a punishment of the time, that's what would have happened. You know, so this timeline, this past life was wrapping up for them. Um, I did my work in it. I protected my children from them. Um, my mother never learned. I don't know what, what her repercussions will be because to, to the, even after her death, she's still trying to get at my daughter and my children. Um, but she's not a strong spirit, so she wasn't able to. Um, so yeah, she was still manipulative after she passed because she didn't cross over into the next dimension right away. I thought she had, but apparently she had not because she had unfinished business. I showed her to the door and she chose to, or to the gateway, she chose to leave after I left the scene. And she was already found for a while. She's on the other side now. Um, so what happens is, okay, so now what I always tell people about, so if you took the example of my daughter and I in that situation, 
um, it's going to be easier for her to heal her wounds once I've helped, helped heal my wounds. Because it's like if you have two people, say you're having a conversation, you could be having a um, conversation about someone you're mad at and say both of you are, are just kind of energizing each other and making it stronger and talking back and forth about this other person, how you're mad at them. It's going to make it stronger. Now, if one of you said, no, I forgive, I'm done, I'm done talking and gossiping about that other person, that energy would diminish in strength and it might just disappear for this other person. So being your children and you probably have things you're working on together or similar issues because that's why you're together. Once you as the mother, because you got to remember, you're the matriarch for your family and usually the spiritual warrior. So once you, as the mother, start healing those wounds, it, first of all, it, um, it takes it out of the Akashic records. Because when individuals are born on this planet, the Akashic record that the grid that's held on this planet, those painful memories are held in there. So when you forgive those things, people born onto the planet do not connect with those memories and that pain right away. So that, for one... It takes it out of your system by um, neutralizing the memory so that it's not so strong for the other person. They can heal it. So, and as the mother, once you start healing your Akashic record, it can clear up in even generations unborn because it's almost like a family curse that's handed down generation after generation until someone, someone stops it. So like, say for me, healing my emotional wounds and dealing with my mother, taking my power back and all that, that is how I can help my daughter to heal. So say my daughter doesn't say she's really traumatized and won't talk to me and doesn't want to talk to me about this. There are some things you can do where you just um, raise your vibration, maybe do a little bit meditation say a prayer and ask to talk to your child's higher self. And you can say things, you know, like, especially to teenagers, honey, I am not the enemy, you know, and you just, you have this talk, not from ego, but from heart. Another thing you can do, oh, just to go back, I used to do that with my kids all the time, especially with all the hormonal fluctuations. Sometimes they get really kind of out of hand and I just go in my room and shut the door and pray. And it worked every time. Pretty soon they'd be at the door, mom, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that or, or whatever the situation was. So you can do those kinds of things and it really helps. The other thing you can do is work energetically. You can um, just send them love and you can um, just maybe do, imagine you're doing a laying on of the hands, fleshing out toxicities, whatever they want. It works. Mother's prayers. When a mother prays for her child, there's no peer of prayer. I don't care if they're an adult, alive, or deceased. Those prayers shoot straight up and are attended to immediately because they're pure of heart and there's often a sense of desperation. So those are some of the ways you can help your kids because um, sometimes they won't talk to you about this or they're not as conscious of it and they don't want to look at it. Um, another thing you can do, you know, if you just want to send them love, you can just think of a time, shut your eyes and just kind of pull them into your, your imagination and think of a time that was really loving and wonderful in your life, whether it's their birth or a special birthday party or a vacation, but just kind of think about them and, and just really connect with that feeling and just feel love towards them. And I'm telling you, your child is going to feel that love, whether they're on the other side of the country or not. So those are kind of some of the things so that you can do. Now, another part I wanted to speak of, because I told you I, I carried guilt for a long time. So my first three children, um, their father was a narcissist. He was somebody I knew in Salem, but just kind of a casual person. But he was a lot like my the man I was married to in Salem, and he was the father of these three children, my three older children back in Salem. So I married a man that was similar to him. And um, at some point, my self-esteem started building and started feeling better about myself. And I realized I had to leave him. And I did. I got divorced. 
Um, but a divorce to children, I stayed for a long time thinking that it was going to be so traumatic because it's almost like a death. It's a death of a dream or it's the death of life as they knew it. So I stayed for a long time and felt tremendous guilt. I felt like, well, now they'll, they may have trouble um, having healthy relationships because I left their father. I showed them, you just walk away. It took me a long time to realize that no, I, I didn't diminish their experience by doing that. What I showed them was that if you're in a bad situation, you get to take your power back. You don't have to stay. You don't have to tolerate it. You can leave. And so I showed them that you've got to follow your heart and trust yourself. They may not have liked it at the time, but that's how it is. Um, so I was finally able to let go of that guilt. Um, there was another time that I wanted to tell you about. Um, and this is about how two people um, were really um, energized about a situation. Like I, I was saying, we had, um, where I live in Minnesota, we had a couple of years ago, um, a person who was mentally ill was at the Mall of America and at the same time as a mother with her child. The mentally ill person wanted to harm someone that day, so he grabbed the child and threw them. I mean, it's like all these open floors where you can see down to the next floor. It throws him over to another floor, and the child was injured, had some broken bones. But so I was talking to another individual at work about this, and we were just both so mad, uh, you know, because the child got hurt. <laughs> and this kid, it wasn't sounding like he was going to be prosecuted because he had problems. Well, too bad is what I say. I don't care if you have problems, if you can't function in society, stay home, or you need some kind, you need a deterrent. That, that's ridiculous. Anyways, my own personal opinion out of this, I'm trying not to do that. But so talking to this other person, we were just like, I do this and I do that. We were both getting so whipped up about it. And the more we talked about it, the more agitated we got because we both had similar issues in past lives that we didn't know of at the time. And we really energized and agitated that situation. So that is how that works. Um, looking at my notes. Um, Okay, so we've talked about that. Um, just there's one more thing. I'm just taking a look. Okay, so I wanted to. I'm just about done here. Wrap up. Um, this, if this seems a little um, out of context and disjointed, I'm sorry, but I wanted to wrap up this last part of it. So what I found out basically, so all of these years, you know, I'm trying to fill a void. I'm trying to connect with my mother to feel source. That was never going to happen. I tried it with friends. That was never going to happen. I tried it with my children. That was never going to happen. Because what I found out was this initial void, this initial hole in my heart that I felt where I didn't feel complete and didn't feel good enough was actually from, and I'll link that video here as well, was actually from my past life in Atlantis, if you haven't seen that video, but I had an identical twin sister who I've met in this lifetime now, who, um, as we were getting away during the flood, she got swept away by a wave and I tried to hold on to her and she was ripped out of my hands. So I always felt responsible if bad things happened to other people. And I was always looking for that little girl. I was always trying to fill that void, not knowing it, that there was a void inside of me that I couldn't fill with my mother. I couldn't fill with my friends. I couldn't fill with my children. I couldn't fill it with anyone. It was because of her, what happened to her, and that wound. So fast forward, I don't know how long that was ago, millions of years or whatever. I'm not really sure. It was a very long time ago. Um, we've had, and I talk about this in other videos, we've had seven lifetimes together where we were identical twins as in that lifetime. 
and we're back together in this lifetime we've met and we're good friends um we're not identical twins but we think and talk alike and and we have a lot of fun we're catching up for last time so i finally found what it was that i was looking for and it was like i said before it was not something i could fill with a mother a child or friends i needed my baby sister back and i'm so thankful that i found her and that we have each other so again my website is www.embody-light.com i do hypnotherapy psychic medium readings Akashic Records work. I can hypnotize you and take you to the other side to see your deceased loved ones or channel them. Um, I do many, many things that can help with this. But mostly when I've got a person coming to me that's having difficulty with their family relationships, children, mother, whatever, we look at these past life situations and we look at where you are and how you're in, in how you're interacting energetically. And so then what we'll do is we'll go in, we'll take that color, we'll do forgiveness work. Sometimes we have to do past life regression so you can understand it. But we take the energy out of the blueprint so that you stop recreating those painful situations. So that if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment box and um, you can send me an email for more personal questions or a suggestion for an upcoming video. And my email address is embodylight30 at gmail.com. Thank you and have a blessed day.